What does it take to win not one but two Nobel Prizes and in two different sciences while battling poverty, prejudice and even radiation poisoning? This is the story of Marie Curie, a physicist, a chemist, a pioneer, a woman of silence, steel and science. Her days weren't glamorous, they were exhausting, obsessive and wildly productive. Today we dive into the insane daily routine of a genius who refused to follow anyone's path, so she made her own. Marie Curie was born Maria Salomea Sklodowska on November the 7th, 1867 in Warsaw, then part of the Russian Empire. Her father, Vladislav, was a physics and mathematics teacher, passionate about science, but dismissed from his job by Russian authorities for promoting Polish identity. Her mother, Bronislava, was the headmistress of a girls' boarding school. She died of tuberculosis when Marie was just 10. That early loss left a lifelong mark. Marie was the youngest of five children in a deeply intellectual and patriotic household. But life under Russian rule was brutal. Polish language and culture were suppressed and women were barred from higher education. Still, Marie excelled in school and dreamed of becoming a scientist. She found a secret path to learning, the Flying University, an underground network of lectures held in private homes where Polish students, especially women, could learn forbidden subjects. Life is not easy for any of us, but what of that? We must have perseverance and above all confidence in ourselves. In her early 20s, Marie made a pact with her sister Bronislava. She would work as a governess to fund her sister's medical studies in Paris, on the condition that Bronislava would later help Marie do the same. And that's exactly what happened. At age 24, Marie moved to Paris, enrolled at the Sorbonne, and began studying physics and mathematics. She lived in a freezing attic apartment, surviving on buttered bread and tea, often fainting from hunger, but never giving up. There she met Pierre Curie, a brilliant but quiet scientist who shared her passion for truth over status. They married in 1895 and together they formed one of science's most legendary partnerships. Nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Marie's early life wasn't defined by privilege. It was defined by sacrifice, resilience, and fierce intellect, traits that would guide every discovery she made. Together, Marie and Pierre discovered polonium and radium, ushering in the age of radioactivity, a term she coined herself. After Pierre's sudden death in 1906, struck by a horse-drawn carriage in Paris, Marie was devastated. She was 38 years old, a widow, a mother of two, and now alone in her scientific mission. But instead of retreating, she stepped into Pierre's position at the Sorbonne, becoming the first female professor in its history. She continued their shared work and pushed forward on her own. In 1911, she was awarded her second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for isolating pure radium and defining its atomic weight. Marie famously said, We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing, at whatever cost, must be attained. Despite her accolades, she faced relentless scrutiny, not just as a scientist, but as a woman in a male-dominated world. When rumors of her relationship with physicist Paul Langevin leaked, the press vilified her. She endured public scandal, xenophobia and sexism, yet continued working without pause. During World War I, Marie didn't hide in labs. She equipped and drove a mobile X-ray unit, nicknamed Little Curies, to the front lines, treating over a million soldiers. She taught her daughter, Irene, to do the same. In her final years, Marie founded the Radium Institute, now the Curie Institute in Paris, dedicated to studying radiation and treating cancer. Two generations of Curies would pass through its doors, but, her devotion came at a cost. Decades of exposure to radiation with no protective protocols took their toll. Her health deteriorated and in 1934, she died of aplastic anemia, aged 66. 
She was buried in Seoul, but in 1995, her remains were moved to the Pantheon in Paris, the final resting place of France's greatest minds. She became the first woman to be enshrined there for her own achievements. Marie Curie's legacy continues with her daughter Irene also winning the Nobel Prize, her notebooks remaining radioactive even today, and her name living on, literally, in the periodic table, element 96, Curium. Behind the headlines, Marie Curie's daily life was one of relentless obsession, quiet discipline, and profound sacrifice, driven by a single belief. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Marie Curie's day began before dawn, her mind already alive with scientific puzzles. Based on historical accounts from her letters and biographies, we can piece together her relentless routine, a testament to her unyielding focus. At 5 a.m., while Paris was still asleep, Marie was awake, mentally wrestling with complex scientific problems, her brain a laboratory before she even stepped into one. By six, she was diving into scientific journals, poring over the latest research, or preparing experiments with meticulous care, setting the stage for discoveries that would reshape science. Around eight, she would share a light breakfast with Pierre, simple bread, coffee, maybe some cheese. Fuel for the day, not a moment of indulgence. By nine, she was in her lab, a cramped shed where she spent hours isolating elements like radium, measuring, testing, and retesting, her hands steady despite the grueling work. Lunch at one was often an afterthought. She'd grab something quick, if anything at all, sometimes eating alone to stay lost in thought. From two to six, she was back in the lab or teaching at the Sorbonne, her lectures as precise as her experiments, inspiring students in a world that rarely welcomed women. By six, she'd take a brief pause, writing letters, reading, or walking to clear her mind. But by seven, she was back in the lab, often alone, analyzing data and scribbling notes under flickering light. Sleep? That rarely came before midnight, her mind too restless to shut off. This wasn't just a schedule. It was a life devoted to uncovering the universe's secrets, hour by grueling hour. Marie worked in a makeshift shed behind the School of Physics in Paris. No insulation, no running water, no funding. She and Pierre processed tons of pitch blend ore in this shed to isolate radium. One never notices what has been done. One can only see what remains to be done. She wore the same dark dress every day, famously saying, if you're always thinking about what to wear, you're not thinking about science. For her, beauty was elsewhere. I am among those who think that science has great beauty. She refused to patent radium, ensuring its benefits reached all of humanity a true symbol of scientific integrity. Marie Curie's relentless pursuit of knowledge offers timeless lessons we can apply today. Structure your obsession. She didn't waste a second. Her time was measured in problems, not minutes. Create despite circumstance. No lab, no funding, no problem. Marie made history in a shed. Live simply, think big. Minimal clothes, minimal comforts maximum discoveries. Dedicate yourself to purpose. Marie once declared, I was taught that the way of progress was neither swift nor easy. Marie lived for discovery, embracing progress despite its challenges. Persist relentlessly. Despite personal loss and relentless obstacles, she never wavered in her pursuit of truth. Protect inner focus. Marie once famously said, be less curious about people and more curious about ideas. She tuned out gossip and fame, focusing fiercely on ideas over distractions. Marie Curie didn't just chase answers, she chased truth. In a world that tried to dim her light, she burned brighter, working in a freezing shed, defying barriers and sacrificing everything for the sake 
of discovery. Marie Curie's life reminds us that greatness isn't found in applause or comfort. It's forged in the quiet moments of persistence, in the courage to keep asking questions, no matter the cost. She understood the universe in ways few ever will. And in doing so, she lit a path for all of us. Now, what's the one question you're burning to answer? The one problem you'll chase relentlessly, like Marie did? Share it in the comments below. Let's inspire each other to keep pushing forward. If her story moved you, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more stories of history's greatest minds. Because the world still needs relentless dreamers. Will you be one of them?